to go over how I did my live stream setup for working on the Tilt 5 with Figman XR while I was at AR House LA. I did have a couple questions just prior to that. Before we yes, right please go through with that. I still have to do a little bit of setup yeah, here. That's fine. So, um, was was your first um, hands-on with Tilt Five at AR House? Have you have you even heard of it prior to heading to the AR House? That was at AWE up in the Bay Area. I met with Jerry, and she was doing some demos of the Tilt Five, and I actually met with her kind of one-on-one -on -one through a different client that I had been working on. And I got the chance to try out the drawing program, Figment XR, on the Tilt 5. And I used it for just a little bit, but I was very familiar with the Tilt Brush controls because I've been using Tilt Brush. That's the original VR art program made by Google that I tried out on the Vive originally. Since 2016, and she saw that I was fairly capable at making art on the board. And I was like, hold on, I want to do a project with you. And I said, yes, of course, because I fell in love with the Tilt 5 the moment that I used it. That's awesome. That's great. And I think, yeah, Javier's here too. Javier, welcome. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. 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 Good night. In the background, this is but I'm here, whatever you need. So for, awesome. for, for, for those just tuning in, um, uh, Blueprint Ben, who's in here, um, is over on the Mixcast side, side of things. Uh, Javier, hey, is over on, uh, Javier is over on the, um, the Figment side of things. Um, and then Ewan has been doing some really awesome and creative streams using really the first person to stream using the Tilt 5 with Mixed Reality on a streaming platform. Uh, is definitely the first person. Uh, That's like the historic know. moment. Yeah, like you are like the, the first, first, the first right. person. So, um, so really grateful for 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 all these for all you guys to be here um, and just kind of get and you know learn a little bit more about how first of all the Tilt Five system could be used um, as a content creation device. Um, secondly, uh, how all these things work together. Uh, you know, to provide this content, you know, being able to use Figment with the wand and then being able to use Mixcast in order to introduce it um, and show it to people in a way that that makes sense and, and, and is fun to watch. So, um, so uh, Ewan's just going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, their experience with the Tilt 5 and, and um, you know, maybe your time at um, the AR house in LA where you, where you kind of put all this in motion and put it all together and um, what that process looked like and and kind of how that how that's been for you. Yeah, the first thing that I wanted to figure out was how I could get it streaming on the program that I use. I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Let's go with full screen. And you can see that I use Streamlabs. And down here in the middle, I have a lot of different screen captures. And I'm actually going to delete the ones that I used for Figment XR and the display capture so that you can see me set those up again as if I was doing this for the first time. Is Streamlabs easier than OBS? Streamlabs has a lot of the same functions as OBS, but it has a lot more tools specifically for if you're a Twitch streamer and you want to get fun Twitch chat friendly. interactions. Yeah, yeah it's very Twitch friendly because you can see here that it shows you like who all the latest followers were. I have a thing that shows me who the latest patrons were who joined. So if you want to make a very good audience uh, interactive streaming setup. I prefer Streamlab because it has a lot of that built in. There's also a whole website that is dedicated to it, so you can input widgets and other fun things. But none of that's really used in the basic setup of 
getting the Tilt 5 live streaming on here. I have a lot of extra stuff. You can see this overlay that's around the edges here. That's a bunch of stuff that I just made to make my stream prettier, but you do not need any of that to get Tilt 5 working. So the first thing that you want to do to get stuff up on your screen is you want to go into add source and what I do is I do a screen capture but to start the screen capture as something that can be captured by Streamlabs I'm going to go over to Steam and I'm going to open Figment XR from my library that's just over here and then once you have something actively running, go and alt tab out of it, go back to Streamlabs, and then go back to the screen to add a new source. Again, this is in the middle of the screen here. On the right, you have audio mixers to do your mic volume and your desktop audio volume. And on the left here, you can create new scenes. If I had multiple different streaming setups, I could save all of this as a scene and then make a new one. But I like what I got, so I don't mess with it too much. But then I want to go to, I think it's screen capture. Yes, capture games and apps. And you click on that. And then you go down here to add source. And then, I have two existing sources. That's live for when I do avatar capture for VR and open brush for when I do full VR art streams. But I want to go down here and add new source instead. And this one I will title Figman XR. You can type in whatever you want, whatever is easiest to remember. Usually that's just the name of the app that you want to capture. And then click add source here. And then you will get a bunch of things that show you everything that you have open on your computer at the time. And what I want to find is Figment XR, which should be in here somewhere, but it doesn't look like it is at the moment. Hmm, okay. I think it's because it's minimized. If you brought it up and hit Alt Enter to make it not full screen, you might get it. Thank you for the tip. Well, say for sure. Yeah, let me see if I can exit out of this and go back in. Screen capture, add source. Let's see if I can add this in again. Get rid of that old one. And then edit the source properties to see if I got it picked up. Yep. There it is, and it will grab this window just as what you see in first-person glasses. So I'm going to put the glasses on. It should pick up the menu here if you guys are seeing that. And then it's important to capture Figment XR separately from Mixcast to get the uh, to get the mixed reality display because it's helpful to have the first person view and the mixed reality view at the same time so that if you are doing something really close up working either with a game or with an artwork that people can see what you see through first person view and also see the holographic overlay at the same time. And I'm actually going to take a quick minute to go look for an HDMI cable. I think I'm going to try to plug in a second monitor for this, but that's the magic of like live, <laughs> live <truly> streaming. <laughs> it is. I actually just, just got done with a different chore before this started. And I thought I had an HDMI cable here, but if either Javier or Ben 
wants to take it away and talk about Mixcast or Figment, you're welcome to. I go find this. Awesome. Sounds good. I'll be right back. I'd be interested in learning more about uh, Javier. If you've had any other like artists or content creators talk to you about streaming with with Figman. Uh, not really. Uh, he is pretty much the pioneer here. Uh, and you know, when I first saw what he was doing, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> it's awesome!" You know. Because I've been working on this app for so many years, and like you know, finally, and we get a an artist that you know is showing it. Because you know, what can I say? Uh, it's and been it's a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, and he, he did great. So like, I, I couldn't be happier, really. Unlike unlike our Star Wars attempts that we did for May the Fourth, which were more more than embarrassing. <laughs> no, that was awesome, actually. You okay. guys did great. Yeah, you well, you know, I have a few years under the belt playing with Figment, so you know, I did a little better. <laughs> well, we have oh, Halloween coming up, so we'll have uh, we'll have a good, good yeah. competition. And now that we have Mixcast, we can get everyone. Yeah, you didn't have Mixcast then, <laughs> so I had like uh, different air glasses so I could record with. So I had a little unfair advantage over you guys, but now. The, there's a level playing field, let's say that, with mixed cast. In terms of uh, streaming, but I don't think my talent is going to get any better with drawing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm terrible. But, you know, in that, like, uh, Star Wars, you know, I mostly use 3D models from Sketchfab, and then I just put special effects on it. You know, I, like, I get a la lightsaber from Sketchfab, just a 3D model, and just with the tilt brush, you know, I painted, like, the laser and some spark things and and then uh i think there was yoda and i gave him like some sort of like energy ball and, and then there was darth vader and i painted some fires it was like really simple yeah. Yeah, honestly it took me 15 minutes uh that's the point of the app you know is to let anyone it's not just for the pros you know i i kind of i that's what i really wish is like you know, anybody, you, if you have any interest, you know, to create something, even for your kids or just for yourself, you know, I try to keep it simple. So, yep, that's, but, uh, for someone like me who's not an artist, like just to jump in there and, you know, pull things in through Sketchfab, just build my own scenes with things that already exist is just equally as fun. Just to see them pop up in 3D is, is awesome. Well, Oh, I love that Kevin was doing, uh, was making 3D objects and then rigging them and then uploading them to Sketchfab so then you could download them because like there's yes, so that many. That was an amazing way to collaborate. Oh, I was so excited for that because I have like a bunch of apps on my phone where I like I've scanned a lot of different things with my phone in and bring it into Blender and use them. Like I did one where I brought in actually the Tilt 5 one and the glasses and like made a whole like basement, but being able to like put them into figment is going to be a lot of fun to play with and that's that's something about figment that i found really impressive was just that that seamless kind of transitioning between different modes of play being able to to create 3d models being able to draw with the the tilt brush style effects it, all working together it can be a little overwhelming at first because you just have such a huge array of tools in the tool set but uh, I think, you know, being able to see streamers like you and go in and, and dive into it really helps kind of ease that and, and show show people how it's done. Democratizing yeah. the, the creativity, like anyone can use it, whether like depending on your skill set, which is great. Yeah, exactly. But now this figment has been out there since 2019, but only now with Tilt 5, it's really kind of democratized because the glasses that it runs on before till five. They're all like two, three thousand dollars. So who's gonna go buy that? So that's, that's like now, now that we got till five, you know, there's something that the people can afford and you know really jump in into mixed reality, augmented reality, however you want to call it. That's true. Uh, right. Yeah, I do you got, have it ready you your... for showing off how to get the augmented reality capture in here. So I'm gonna share my screen. Again, okay. so for this one, 
you guys can all see yourselves again. So this one, it's important to go into the Tilt 5 control panel here, which you get when you just download your drivers and then get going with Tilt 5. I was so impressed with how easy it was to install the glasses. You basically just install some very lightweight drivers, plug them in, and you go. But I have an XE board that is laying flat. But if you have the little boards that raise it up at the end, you'll want to choose raise. And if you have the normal size board, you want to choose LE because this driver here determines how Mixcast will see and sense the board that I have laid out on my coffee tables here for you. So there's two places that you want to go and the preferences, which I'll show you how to get to actually. It's gotta be a complete walkthrough. So Mixcast, you start it up, it's just this very lightweight little thing here. And then you go to this cog to go into configuration. You go up to open preferences, and then it'll start you, probably in general, but you wanna go down to physical devices I'm going to use the integrated camera that's in my laptop and then down to virtual cameras down in the mixing section. Also make sure that is the same camera that you chose for physical devices. And then since this is the version that has the Tilt 5 compatibility, you will see this under lens info and it has this very helpful little Tilt 5 icon that says calibrate with Tilt 5 board. And you click on this, it'll take the camera that you chose. I'm going to move this around so that you can see this more full screen. And you can see that it is trying to pick up all of the dots around the board, and it's kind of picking up where my plant is on the wall and some of my wall. And I'm going to tilt the camera down hit retry calibration, tilt it down a little bit more. And then once it gets to the point where it finds the board, it'll change to a live feed. And if you want to readjust your camera angle, you'll go up to this button here in the upper left corner, click on that until it looks nicely the way you want it to be. Also, now you can see me here in the corner. So I'll hit apply on this. And with that applied, you want to make sure that you don't move whatever camera you have because it will use the data from whatever last camera position you had in it. But with that applied, you can go back to Steam. And as soon as you launch Figmin XR or whatever program that you are wanting to link with Mixcast, it should start automatically. So first you'll see this, and then it'll change to your live stream with everything that is running in the program running on this board here. There are a couple different settings you can use to get your body to actually clip over what's projected on the screen, but I did not use those because it made the edges of my board kind of blurry and I wasn't using the best camera. I was using a camera that had a kind of fisheye lens on it, so it was messing with the tracking a little bit. This is much more even since it's being used on my laptop. And then you'll see these settings up here at the top. It took me a couple of streams until Ben chimed in. He's like, you know, pro tip, you can hide that with the tilde key. So that'll bring your settings menu back and forth. You can actually go back into your preferences from here and make any minor configurations you need if you nudge the camera and need to get it recentered again. And, and those controls do have some value if you are just looking to quickly <laughs> snap a screenshot, take a video, uh, make this into your your webcam for a Zoom call or something like that. Those yes. are all options you have. Absolutely. But the reason that I used a two monitor setup with this, I'm going to switch my screen back over to my second monitor, change window. Screens, screen two. Going back to Streamlabs over here is because this allows me to have 
both the base Figment XR, which I can put up in the corner to be my first person cam. And it allows me to add a new source, which I will set as a screen capture. Add as a new source, screen capture. And I'm just going to set that to capture everything on screen one. So that way, I can put this underneath Figment XR and have this overlay up in the top left. Going to resize that to be a little bit bigger. Going to minimize Discord so that you can see both. And when I put on the glasses, you should get the first person view and the augmented reality view. I'm going to go to create, I'm going to choose one of the brushes that'll show up nicely hovering above the screen here. It'll be icing, put that in white so it shows up good, and you can just start to draw any kind of thing you want. In the shadows. That's cool. And you get a pretty good amount of vertical space with the augmented reality display from Mixcast. So I can make these into trees. I'll say like that, that the next version is going to let you configure an additional height boost to that so that if you do want to draw really tall and have that all be captured, uh, that's something that you'll be able to configure in Mixcast. Yes, I am personally very excited for this. So. Yeah, that is the basics of it. I made it sound pretty simple, but it did take me multiple days of figuring it out. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. That's so great. That's awesome. And, and you are, oh, yeah. you're obviously, you're in the Discord too. So if anyone does have any questions, you don't mind. If they oh, can, yes. Reach out to you. I'm constantly on Discord, always online. So <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, you want to say hi, let me know. But yeah, I'm just going to doodle around here so you can just watch it in action. But anyone has anything they want to share? Any questions? Yep. We're if all here to answer them. If there's anyone in here who has any questions about um, you know, uh, mixed cast uh, or figure in general or, uh, or uh, streaming, now's, now's the best time to ask. And I think it might be a good idea to write these steps in a little write-up after this is over so that can be shared with anyone who might be interested in streaming. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great idea. But yeah, otherwise... And if you're a developer too, uh, really easy to get the Mixcast SDK in there um, so that you can enable your application to work the same way that Figman did here. Um, we're working on the Unreal SDK, uh, so that should be coming down the pipe, but uh, we got the Unity one out there available now. Anyways, if there's no extra comments for me, thank you guys for having me tonight. It's been fun. No, thank you. We, we appreciate it. This is, this is awesome. Super excited to see uh, you know, what you do next. Um, and and kind of uh, you know what uh, what projects you work on in the future. This is great. Oh yeah, this is super, got some big plans. Super fun. I did uh, get a question in the comments uh, oh, about yes. movable cameras for Mixcast. Uh, it's certainly something we've considered. Um, we're initially, I think, going to be focusing on just being able to have it kind of automatically adjust when you do end up moving your board or end up moving your camera around, um, not necessarily in real time, but at least, you know, taking the pain out of, oops, I, I nudged my camera and now I need to go recalibrate definitely want to try to reduce that uh, that kind of friction. Mm -hmm. um, looking at trying to do a real-time camera, uh, move a movable camera where you're able to kind of pick it up and, and walk it around a, a creation or something like that uh, is something we would love to get working, um, but probably needs another source of tracking info. So perhaps if you've got Steam VR set up for tracking, you know, maybe there's a way to combine the two. Certainly things that we've been exploring, uh, but not quite to, are able to, to commit to at this point. 
moving camera would be super fun for streams. I will say that is a fun, new, exciting piece of news for me. So another thing that you could do. Um, one time, I think everyone did it. Uh, so in Figment, there's um, something that I call it uh, external camera. So it's a, it's a setting you put in, and then you enable it, and there's like a camera you can drag around uh, the scene. And basically, it replaces, you know, the, the first person view that he was having in the corner. That's going to be replaced to whatever that like virtual camera is pointing at. So that's also another way that you can, you know, use Figment to like, you know, show particular parts of your scenes without like, you know, getting your head right in it. Although when when uh, Ben has uh, the movable camera for Mixcast, now that's going to be epic. Right. And I'll say that Mixcast also does include some virtual camera functionality, so it is able to to produce some similar you know effects as what you're describing there. Although it's not necessarily something you can just have dragged around the scene because we don't want to interfere with the application's interaction. Uh, but uh, you can create an external camera that only captures the, the virtual view. Um, and you can even fly that around with a gamepad. That's the one kind of uh, intuitive control method that we have available right now. It's kind of a fly cam. Uh, but, you know, all things we're trying to improve on. That looks awesome. So that's what, that's what he's doing. That's the external camera that I was talking about. Turned it that's on. beautiful. Yeah, this is one that I made very briefly. I'm not sure if I even streamed this one. It's an early test, just figuring out the program. But I do love the external camera a lot. I didn't get the chance to try it with the, what is it called? The special uh, picture frame that shows you what's happening in Figment. I always forget the name of it. But you can plug it in and it will show. Oh, yes. Um... What's in a looking glass display? A looking so, glass, yes, that's yeah. it. You, have, it's, you know, it's like a little holographic portrait frame. Uh, they sell very expensive displays, but that's the cheapest one that, and I have, and I like it a lot, you know? And, uh, yeah, my kids love it, you know? Um, that's how I can, you know, make it kind of holographic for them, since I only have one set of glasses, mm -hmm. so... Anyways, yeah, that's external camera. That can be found by going to the settings down here, going into options, and then over here underneath reset preferences to the right is external camera, which can be turned on or off. And the other fun thing I like about it is that you can change the field of view on the external camera. I'll turn it off so you guys can see what's on my screen here. But let me see, is it off? Yes. But you can make it wider or narrower. I actually haven't tried this narrow. I want to see what it looks like. Oh yeah, you can get a really zoomed in view this way. But that is also fun to show off in streams if you want to give people a very close up and more exact look at the artwork. It's also how to take videos of your artwork after it's completed, if you're making art on the Tilt 5, that is, is that there's a lot of angles that you can't get with just the Tilt 5 glasses. You'd have to kind of really crouch down close to the board, but you can get down basically anywhere you want with this function in Figment XR. You can also resize the, the camera. You know, it has like a little preview, so you, sometimes like it's so tiny you can't see it. So you can also resize it. Go in like this. <laughs> One sec. But this is something that I haven't played with a lot. I would like to go back in to the different artworks I've created and. For this one, I would just open up probably OBS. OBS is what I use for plain recording and not streaming. So I'd make Figman full screen and then do an OBS recording of it and then just go through with this camera and record stuff. Javier, have you tried to port over Tilt Brush's uh, camera pathing uh, controls? 
No, uh, because it didn't make sense for AR uh, when I was doing it. So, uh, and then after it was in Tilt 5, and it's like, okay, that could have been interesting. But yeah, I never brought it in because, you know, well, that it's was quite like, complex, I'd say. Mm -hmm. The, inter the getting that all developed in, I think, would be a, a, a big undertaking. So I can imagine it's a trade off. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, now you just move it with your hands. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, unless there's anything else you guys want me to share, I think that's all I have on my end. No, that was great. Yeah, really, really appreciate it. It's cool to see the process and, and, and see you set it up. And, um, you know, hopefully hopefully a lot of people can kind of see this and learn from it. And, and I mean, it's, it's going to be so cool, you know, months from now or years from now or weeks from now when there's a bunch of people, you know, streaming content on the Tilt 5, uh, whatever that may be, whether it's Figment or, or um, you know, whatever whatever comes out down the line. So I would uh, love to see D&D &D games live streamed. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting to see what, what people do with it. And I mean, the best content we've seen so far has been from the community, you know, people like you and, 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 and people that are just using it for ways that we didn't even think, you know, that we weren't even looking in, looking at right now, right? We, we haven't had the opportunity to do it and we have people jumping in and, and creating um, cool experiences with, with, you know, using using it with looking glass and, and, and using it with streaming and, and hand tracking um, and all this cool stuff. And it's, it's, it's really incredible to see. So, um, you know, it's a, I'm super excited to see, you know, what, what we all think of next, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's such a new medium. It's going to be, it's going to be cool to see. So does anybody have questions for even while they are here? Does anyone have any questions in general for mixed casts? Figment. I see Des Boot is asking about the future uh, for Figment and Mixcast. Uh, I can speak to to us. I mean, we're we're constantly iterating on on what we've got. Uh, you know, everything from the video camera compatibility to the calibration processes for VR and AR uh, platforms. Um, right now, it's a, a lot about trying to help developers out to get to, you know the Mixcast integration working smoothly in in their experiences as they bring them out for Till Five. Um, so that's that's really where we're focused, but uh, certainly improvements coming down the line. Uh, uh, stuff around depth cameras is pretty exciting to me. Uh, there have been a few cameras coming out, you know, the Connect and the Z line um, that are really going to improve the quality of, of the kind of output you can create. And speaking to being able to have your hand show up in front of the content, uh, that's something that depth cameras can really help out with. We do have that machine learning model that can try to, to cut you out and put you in front of the content if you walk in front of it, but uh, it's certainly not not going to be as as reliable as something like a, a depth camera. And with Figment, you know... <laughs> it keeps getting, uh, you know, bigger and bigger. Um, so, you know, we mostly showcase, you know, this uh, tip brush integration we have, but that really is like a tiny little piece of the puzzle you know figment can do so much more um but for example you can you can make objects you can give them physics you know you could make like a little mini golf game that you can play you know you grab your, your club and hit the balls you know there's a lot to it uh, but uh if you try you, that's already here in, in their samples if you launch the app you can see them but they use voxels because that's how we actually started out. You know, we started out as a, a voxel editor uh, and other things. And this past year, we added Tilt Brush. So what's happening and coming down the line is that right now, what everyone is showing you, he's basically painting the scene, right? But um, he cannot make objects that are separate and he cannot like give them physics so that, you know, you can make this mini golf scene with actual models made with the tilt brush integration. So that's something that is coming and I'm really excited about because, you know, tilt brush is just so much easier and accessible uh, as a creative tool for, uh, you know, beginners. And so, uh, yeah, so you'll be able to do all kinds of things, you know, and, you know, 
probably by the end of the year, you know, Tilt Brush, uh, which we call the sketch editor inside the app, uh, is going to be fully integrated with everything, you know, give them physics, you know, go crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I'm always coming up with new things to do. So, yeah, it's not stopping. I'm so excited to see what you do next with Figman. And I really need to try out more of the non-tilt brush controls. That's just what I've been doing since I'm so used to it and have so much experience with it. But being able to add physics to objects in augmented reality sounds so fun. Yeah, it is. And uh, that's another thing that I kind of wish, you know, like, you know, I also feel like physics are not really difficult. The only thing that's difficult in physics is the math. And there's no math here. It's just like moving sliders. Uh, so, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we'll see. You know, there's like so many things that, you know, people are yet to discover in Figment. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a developer, you know, I don't have that much time to like be making videos and showing stuff. So I am so thankful to you, everyone, uh, for what you're doing, you know, uh, showing people uh, what you can do, you know, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Hey, you too. You make a very fun toy for us artists to go out and play with. So definitely mutually beneficial relationship. And also to answer, I think, Das Boot's question about what's next. It's definitely streams, streams, streams in general. And also just new and exciting projects in the world of XR art, which is stuff outside of the Tilt 5, in the Tilt 5, just anything and everything spatial computing that I can get my hands on for creating artistic worlds is what I'm going to be trying to do next. Ooh, an initial advice for an artist interested in starting a Tilt 5 art stream. Definitely lean on the community. The biggest advice that I can give to anyone who's starting streaming, I'm a new streamer myself, is to go to an existing audience. Market yourself to people who are already interested in what you're interested in, and then hope that them resharing your work with others will bring in people outside of the community who might not know what it is, might be curious about it. You can share your love of it with them. And the second biggest piece of advice is to just make things you were passionate about. People really respond to streamers who have a really good and bubbly personality, I guess I would describe it as. Which is basically anyone who is very obviously having fun and enjoying what they're doing is something that people really like to see in a streamer. Just something that people can connect with and it helps to... The very best advice I got from a streamer was someone I actually met at AR House, who does a lot of live streams. He has something like 18,000 subscribers on YouTube. But his advice was, act like you are just hanging out with your friends. Talk to them like it's your friend and you're just like hanging out playing games together, hanging out making art together, and keep the vibe as something casual and friendly and just don't forget to have fun speaking of hanging out what's it like at uh, ar house there that's what i'm always curious about <laughs> oh man that was something else there was 12 other creators which was pretty big for the cohorts they usually keep it between like seven and ten supposedly this was my first one so i didn't have anything to compare it to but we're all in bunk beds, it's hot, the AC was having trouble, so it was like 90 degrees at night. But despite all of this, we all got to know each other really well. We're all, everyone was just insanely talented there, very friendly. We got along right away because we all have a lot in common, obviously. I think they choose people who can highlight each other's strengths. And just got to making friends, got to collaborating, got to sharing what we knew with each other. A lot of workshops that were actually held by the artists who involved, who were invited to the house and not like outside people who are already in the industry, just 
all of us sharing what we know and having fun together. It was a really nice mix of doing the typical things you would imagine of an influencer house in LA, like going to parties at LA Tech Week, doing a lot of networking, also a lot of drinking, but also just working hard every day because you would wake up and you would go down to the shared living space, which was just this large great room that was full of 12 desks and you would see everyone else working. So it's like, oh, I got to look like I'm working too. Everyone else is busy. So it was it was a really good environment for creating, actually. I got a lot done while I was there, not just the Tilt 5 project that I worked on with Kevin Ng. Nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the house has a great view. That's what I keep seeing. Yeah, I've been to the house. I went in the house when there was another cohort, and uh, to actually talk to uh, some people there. And yeah, just going in there and walking out into the backyard, I was like, "Well, I could stay here. Do you want me? To can I stay?" That was one of my first thoughts. I walked out and I saw that view, of the yeah. LA skyline, and I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" I said that out loud. Yeah, Aiden and Lucas have just—it's just all a con. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> They got this amazing house. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's amazing group of, of people. And they're doing a lot of uh, amazing things of bringing in cohorts each month um, that are focusing on, on different uh, elements of AR. So it's been great to see them grow over the past um, couple cohorts and seeing the people that have come in and learn from each other. So yeah, I've, 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 I've been excited to watch from like the, the outside and seeing what people have been coming up with. Yeah, they said that me using the Tilt 5 there was the most use it had ever gotten, probably. So they were ha very happy to see it getting yeah. some love. So were we. I gotta say, it was really amazing showing it off at the mm -hmm. final showcase, too, because the best thing about the Tilt 5 versus actual full VR headsets is how lightweight it is and how user and viewer friendly it is because you just take off a pair of glasses, you give it to your friend and they can see immediately. They don't have to strap in, they don't have to adjust the tightness on a bulky headset and then get the tracking and look around and get their bearings. It's like, no, you know where to look. It's right at the mat. You put on the glasses, it appears right in front of you. I gave them a quick crash course on the controller, how to zoom in and move the scene around. And with the help of Mixcast, I was able to share it with a lot of people and everyone really enjoyed seeing it. Everyone was very wowed. You like see their eyes light up as they realize, wow, this really feels like it's coming out at me. And it was kind of magical. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ewan. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, well, what we'll probably do is we'll probably wrap up this talk. Um, thank you very much to, uh, to uh, Ben, um, Javier, and you, and all three of you, thank you so much for, for, for being here and um, you know, uh, you know, talking about your, your programs and your projects. And uh, to everyone else in here listening, thank you so much. If you have a headset, please get out, try it. Try doing a try doing a download mixcast. Try getting it set up and working, and and um, you know share share with us your experiences. We wanna we wanna see it, um, and uh, we will take this um, we will take this little talk, and I'm just gonna put it in a little. It's in the format of a little video here, so we'll, we're gonna upload this to the people on Discord who could not be here to watch it with us, um, and hopefully we keep the dialogue going over on the Discord. Um, if you haven't seen, there is a Mixcast tab in the Discord as well, um, where people are talking about Mixcast in there and a way to get to the Mixcast Discord. Um, so feel free to jump in there if you have any questions for Ben um, or just getting things set up. And uh, again, thanks to everyone joining, and, and we'll just uh, we'll conclude this uh, Thursday night Discord talk. Thank you all. I think I will put my little write-up, a crash course on the steps to get it running in the Mixcast channel. I'll try to get some screenshots in there as well. That'd Perfect. That would be and, amazing. And if, you, <laughs> if you pin me you in that, are you, welcome. 
let me know when when you do that as well, and that way I can pin it to the channel, just so it doesn't get lost. And we can turn it into a blog on the. We'll have you as a guest writer. We can we can put all of that in, um, so people outside of the Discord who are searching for it and are looking for additional resources, can stumble upon it and start making. Figment magic. Oh, that would be amazing. I would love to help other people find mm -hmm. this because not only is sharing it online really cool, just if you have a Tilt 5 headset and you get it working, you can send it to your friends and family and like, hey, look, I'm playing with holograms. Are you jealous yet? <laughs> it's just a fun way to show it off. FOMO. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Everyone have a good rest of your night or morning. Thank you all and good night slash morning slash afternoon slash day. <laughs>